since he's been on the show. So dreaming of you then now it actually sounds more appropriate. I don't even Jeff know if Jeff Passan was alive when this song was the number one hit. No, he was definitely alive. He's like 12 years old. No, Come he's on. not. Yes, he is. For the love of God. Hello, Passan. Uh, hold on. Am I older than you? Older than me? I might be. Oh, I, uh, uh, no, yeah. for, I'm 46. I'm close. Oh, how, okay. how old are you? I turn 44 next month. There wow. we go. Look at I'm that. I'm going to tell you right now, this, this pisses me off. Why? All right? You're, you're older than because, all of us. Because now I'm the old guy. You are the old I guy. I was never the old guy. I was always the young guy. It happens, though. Now I'm here. I'm the old guy. Yeah, you're the old guy, Cap. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, it's okay. Passing's the young guy. I, I, I kind of I like being the old guy because I don't look like the old guy. Right. See, so now, like, same. So that's good for me, too. I also look like I'm 25. No, you don't. Yes, I do. <laughs> not even close. I look like I'm a hot piece of you-know-what no, at 25 no, years old. definitely do not. Yes, no. I do. Yeah. I mean, listen, you got to go into a little summer shred next year, yeah. and then maybe that'll work out. Did you uh, did you appreciate the Selena uh, song? Uh, it was a back in this day, you know what I mean? So. Yeah, honestly, no. But that's okay. <laughs> it was... It was, it was it was just it's a little too easy listening. Yeah. Okay, that's I'm fair. Not, yeah, that's fair. We need something. Wh- yeah, what would the your next time you are on? What would you like yeah. us to play? Uh, surprise me. I, I okay. Don't, I don't need to. I don't need to <laughs> okay. do requests. Like there's there was a, a there's a show I go on every week in in Seattle, and I used to be a little too negative about the Mariners, so they made a, a theme song for me, <laughs> and and it goes something like Jeff Passin. The wet blanket, raining on parades, harsh and buzzes all day. So, like, if you could do, like, a little okay. jingle for me, all right. I'm probably that. not worth it. It's, it's, oh. it's, not, it's not frequent enough that I come on this show. Well, then we'll, that... we'll change that. Yeah, we'll figure that out. What do we need to do? We, we got to open up a wallet for Passin. Let's make this happen. Let this, this man needs to be part of this family well, on a regular basis. And Jeff moreover, Passin brought to you by Tequila Mandala. Yeah, exactly. I got a tequila company. You want you want us to sponsor you? Let me figure this out. Do you drink tequila? Yeah, how about vodka? You like Tito's hand? We got Tito's vodka? too. We got Tito's? Yeah, we got a lot of alcohol Icy around cold here. Coors Light? What do you need? I, yeah. was, I was going to say, the reason that I don't look 44 is because I'd like never drink. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm pretty much convinced of that. All right. F- <laughs> fair enough. Uh, so, Pat. Passion, um, one last question before we get into baseball. How is my favorite young Passion, uh, Spanish-speaking Passion in your household? Uh, he is Muy bien. A, yeah, he is starting first day of uh, his junior year in high school. Wow, and, crazy. And, Wild. and still cannot trill. So Okay, uh, your, we'll work on it. Efforts, your efforts have <laughs> failed. However, yeah. uh, in, in the four semesters he's had at his school, yeah. uh, he's gotten uh, A's in Spanish. Excellent. And we, 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 we speak Spanish pretty regularly because whenever he needs some help, like my wife you know, lived in France for a little while and, and like grew up taking French. So she's not a whole lot of help. So I'm the one he leans on there. Right. And, and we've started giving our like nicknames to dogs with Spanish words that we like. Oh, I like it. So so our dog is entonces. Ah, entonces, see. Si. Yep. And uh, our my in-laws dog is todavía. Oh, todavía. And, Look at that. and so, yeah, so like pretty Spanish words we we yeah. use uh, to name dogs. Now, let me ask you this. Are you basically the the Latino in the clubhouse now? Like is that how you get all these scoops from these Latino players that nobody else can speak Spanish with? Uh, no, that's Alvin Gonzalez and Jorge Castillo. Those, okay. are, those are my those are my teammates. Trust me, I, I'm not speaking speaking as well Spanish. Uh, but I, uh, I I have been very fortunate to to get a little following down in the Dominican Republic. I love it. And you know the the folks down there uh, they tend to turn to me for breaking news, which is a really cool thing because. When I went to the DR with my kid who was there with his high school team in March, uh, I, you know, I, I got recognized a few times. I love and it. They were like, Local and they summer. were like, what are you doing down here, yeah. white boy? <laughs> <laughs> now, did you have like Enrique Rojas from ESPN Deportes who covers baseball like as your cover? Is that what was happening when you were there? No, this was this was like straight up gringo dropped into. Wow. Uh, yeah, it was. And, and don't get me wrong. Like we weren't we weren't walking around like San Pedro in the middle of the night. We were in the resort area, so uh, it, it was it was not like I was <laughs> going and taking full advantage of what the DR has to offer. But 
uh, it was it was still a good time. All right, so Passon, let's ask you this. Speaking of taking full advantage, can the Dodgers now take full, full advantage of what they were supposed to look like um, based off all their injury issues? Like, it seems like they're starting to get healthy potentially at the right time. What do you know about kind of their injury issues and guys kind of coming back, whether it's Bueller today and what you expect or Yamamoto and, and his situation? What do we know about some of these guys? Okay, so let's let's go through the the laundry list, and and it's amazing, by the way, that the Los Angeles Dodgers, just for those who are out on them, have the best record in Major League Baseball right now. With what I'm about to say, uh, I don't know what to expect from Walker Buehler. The stuff was down when he came back. Guys coming back from two Tommy John surgeries. There's not a great history there, so. Uh, My expectations for Walker Buehler aren't particularly high at this moment, but uh, he is a healthy arm, and that's something that the Dodgers have struggled to have Mm -hmm. this year. So uh, he will be back. Uh, Yoshinobu Yamamoto, it's interesting because I had heard uh, probably about a month ago now, uh, you know, it's it's not good. And then so I, I reached out to some people who are a little closer to the situation. They're like, no, it's, it's good. Like the stuff looks good off flat ground then. And now he's off the mound, uh, throwing bullpens. Uh, He's going to progress to live, uh, live ABs. And the expectation is that he will be back for the playoff run. Now things can happen, but uh, right now there's a lot of positivity surrounding him. Same with Blake Trinan. I think it's going to be a short stay on the injured list. Ryan Brazier is on his way back. Uh, and, and that's just the arms. Uh, you know, you add a couple of bats like Matt, Max Muncy and Tommy Edmond to this lineup that they've got already. And I, I do not think, guys, that it's unreasonable to say that the Los Angeles Dodgers will enter the 2024 postseason as World Series favorites. Now, stuff can happen over the next six weeks to change that. But if all of the guys come back healthy – as the Dodgers are hoping, and all of the guys who they have right now stay healthy, I have a difficult time finding a more imposing team than them. But, Jeff, um, what do you think about San Diego and Arizona? Because as I was saying to George before you came on, it's never been this exciting. You know, it's usually the Dodgers are ahead by 10 games and everybody's playing for second place. San Diego has gone crazy since the All-Star break, and Arizona's maybe even gone crazier since the all-star yeah. break and San Diego's getting healthy. Musgrove just came back. There is yeah. a report that Darvish might come back possibly. Mm. De- I, I'm, I'm not bullish on that either. Tatis, by the way, I think they're better yeah. without Tatis. I know that sounds ridiculous, but the numbers don't lie. Nonetheless, do you give San Diego or Arizona a chance at the division? I suppose because they're three games out. Yeah. It would be foolish not to give them a chance, but I will say this guys. Uh, the Padres since the All-Star break are 19 and four. The Diamondbacks since the All-Star break are 20 and five. They are two very good baseball teams, but they're not baseball teams that are going to be playing at an 800 clip for right. the remainder of the right. season. I'm not entirely sure about this, but I believe the third best record, at least in the National League, maybe in all of MLB since the All-Star break, belongs to the Dodgers. So. It, you know, yes, ground has been made up by those other two teams. And in a short series, because it's baseball, absolutely the Dodgers could get knocked out. But I do think that over the course of the next six weeks, as the regular season winds to a close, the Dodgers remain not just favorites, but distinct favorites to win the division. Jeff Passan, ESPN MLB insider, the best in the business, joining us here on Sedano and Cap on 710 ESPN. So, Shohei Otani. What are the chances, if any, that he can pitch in the postseason? None. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Has that, well, hold on a sec. Has that even been floated out there? There's been some chatter around town, but I don't know how real. I didn't think it was real. That's why I wanted to ask you. Well, who like who's chatting? Is it people who know things or people who hope things? Um. Yeah, George. I'm trying to remember where I. I definitely saw it on Twitter somewhere, and I don't. I don't generally tend to follow people that um are are in theory not in the know. But you know, like it could have been just like a rumor thing. It couldn't. It wasn't. I don't. It definitely wasn't like a report by any stretch of the imagination. Just I was looking this up right now because that question honestly took like caught me off guard a little bit because I hadn't heard anything. And Alden Gonzalez said the Dodgers wanted to face hitters simulated game light batting practice the Dodgers will not be pitching him in the playoffs that's out of the question and that aligns with 
everything I've heard as well. There's no, no, no reason to rush him. None whatsoever. If, if they're, look, they're in the Shohei Otani business for the next 10 years, not mm-hmm. for the 2024 season. Maybe if he's signed to a one-year contract and, and he's on board with that, that's something you would consider. But they want to do everything they can to keep him healthy and rushing him back from his second major elbow surgery would just be a bad idea and would be such short-sighted thinking. And, you know, the, the Dodgers, I think they, you know, they've gotten some criticism for maybe not being short-sighted enough and it being a harmful thing that they look long-term. But in the case of an injury, that that's precisely what you do with a player as valuable as Otani. You know, Jeff, you just brought up something really interesting, which is the, the notion that the Dodgers um, – I don't know that something internally is the reason. I, of course, can't figure it out. But why so many young pitchers for the Dodgers seem to get hurt and need Tommy John surgery? What do you think? Coincidence? Or is there something that the Dodgers do with these young guys? Yeah, I think the Dodgers are really good at getting guys to throw the ball really freaking hard. <laughs> and the thing, and, and aside from, like, the, the greatest predictor, guys, of a future arm injury is a pass arm injury. Yeah. Wow, so never heard that. If, George. Yep. I, you, so, so he's being he's he's being a pain in the ass towards me because I always I have a saying that says the biggest predictor of future injury is past injuries. So I, he so when you said that he had PTSD. Well, when you right, said, when right. You said, he he when has you another that. quick saying which yeah. is always uh, two things can be true at once. Yes, I do say yes. that. That is true. Those is that those, not true past two yeah. natural phrases, yeah. Sedano yeah. phrases. Yes. It is. The the difference here, though, Cap, is that I actually wrote a book on it. Oh, so, there we go. Like Look it. at his bona fides he's yeah. throwing out there. El Jefe. Yeah. I, and no, no, uh, George, I'm saying that to back you up. Yes, he's of right. course. Like, it, like maybe, maybe that's something that he says a lot, but when he's saying it, it's absolutely true. Yeah. And uh, the, the, second, the second link, of course, is fastball velocity. How hard do you throw the ball? How much force are you imparting on? Force is traveling through your body and ultimately ending up in your elbow. And uh, when it comes to the Dodgers, let's look at guys who have had Tommy John. Dustin May throws 100. Um, River Ryan, who, by the way, is so good, and that is such a bummer. I think, I think you can make the argument that River Ryan was the best pitching prospect who the Dodgers have developed since Walker Buehler. Like, I think that's, you know, better than May, better than Gonsolin. Um, I know how good Bobby Miller was last year. And by the way, there's another guy who throws really freaking hard yep. and, and gets hurt. Um, I, I just think it's a function of the Dodgers being excellent at creating velocity in their pitchers. But, you know, when they're all going down for a year at a time, uh, it, certainly that conversation is happening, happening internally right now where they say, is it worth it? Like, Pushing these guys to their absolute maximum or near their absolute maximum velocity-wise, um, is that the way that we want to develop pitchers, or is this the sort of thing that we ought to rethink? And the Dodgers have a very robust biomechanics uh, lab and department and very smart people working uh, in that area. And I'm not going to say anyone's going to figure out how to keep pitchers healthy because, uh, listen, when I went into writing the aforementioned book, I thought I'm going to talk with all the right people and I'm going to figure out what the problem is and I'm going to have a solution and I'm going to help save baseball. And by the end, like the book is kind of a big shoulder shrug. I wish I had a, like <laughs> if, you know, if, if I were disingenuous, I would have come to a conclusion that's not real. But by the end, I was the shrugging emoji because I don't have an answer to it either. <laughs> you should and, have ended the I, book with the shrugging emoji, Ashley, actually. I, that would have been I, fantastic. I, you know, I, I, I don't know that it was around at the time because <laughs> I probably would have in the first version that I sent into my editor just, just thrown like one or two of them in there just to troll him a little bit but nah i i don't think it was quite as popular back in god when did i send that in 2014 wow hey jeff um one thing we were talking about before you got here is gavin lux who has been on fire recently and the question we were trying to figure out is who is gavin lux well the real gavin lux please stand up right what do you think well, I, I think with Gavin Lux, and I, I asked somebody at the All-Star game, like, you know, what's up with Lux? Like, and, and the answer I, I found very telling. You know, Gavin Lux came to the Dodgers after this run of really impressive rookies that they had had. And I think he came up and he wanted to be Cody Bellinger. 
and, and not, not go out and hit 40 plus home runs necessarily, but have that impact and, and that immediate impact where you are a star because that's what your pedigree said you should be. And that's what your tools say you can be, but it, it's not a linear path for everyone. And I think Gavin Lux needed to get comfortable with himself and has finally started doing so. He changed his swing a little bit and, uh, I, I think that's gone a long way, but I think he's finally realizing that he doesn't have to be anyone else. He just has to be the best version of himself. And sometimes it takes a little while for people to mature to the point where they realize that's okay, that the best version of yourself is pretty damn good. Best version of yourself is hitting fifth in this lineup uh, ahead of Will Smith, who's one of the best catchers in baseball. And that if, if you can be that productive, and you can have a lineup that goes Otani, Betts, Freeman, Hernandez, Lux, Smith. Like, is Max Muncy going to hit seventh? Yeah. And, and is Tommy Edmond going to hit eighth? Like, that's what we're talking about here? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it is. Yeah. And, uh, you know, hitting fifth in this lineup that has three no-doubt Hall of Famers at the top of it, pretty dang good position to be in. No doubt. Last one for you, Passon, and thank you for the time as always. Give me 60 seconds on how you feel like the American League could shake out. You said you believe the Dodgers could be World Series favorites, but on oh. the flip, on the other side, how do you, how do you, do, are, are, is Cleveland for real? Are the Yankees kind of surging at the right time? Is Baltimore, is it their time? Like, give me 60 seconds on the AL. Cleveland! This is for oh, you! Enough with Cleveland. Oh, yeah. This she is for you. She doesn't stop. She doesn't Jesus. stop all day long. I got to hear about the God, Gardos. Enough. I mean, oh, can right. you believe the Gardos I... have the same record as the Dodgers? I'm like, Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> no yeah, lies told. She was, no lies. She was chirp. She was chirping the same thing to me beforehand. But oh, I am from Cleveland, end. so like she's allowed to do that. And <laughs> also, they haven't won since 1948. Yeah. So stop being a turd. Yeah. Like she has had <laughs> yeah. profession. Like she has had professional anger building up her entire life because this baseball team has been on the cusp. And just hasn't been able to do it. So, so allow her a little bit of that. That being said, Thank you. I don't think that they're. I don't think they're better than the Yankees. I don't think they're better than the Orioles. I'm not sure that they're better than the Astros or the Mariners or even the Twins. That though, guys, is just a function of what Major League Baseball is like in 2024. Not a single team is on pace to win 100 games this year. That hasn't happened since 2014, when the Angels won 98 and were promptly dispatched in the division series by the Kansas City Royals. And so I wish I could sit here and tell you who I think the American League favorite is. I am ruining the idea of having to make a pick in the postseason Ooh. this year because I have no idea who's any good and short series are, are just absolute crapshoots in baseball. So that's my long-winded way of saying I don't have a clue, and when I do, we'll talk about it then. A shoulder shrug emoji then? I, you know, uh, embarrassingly, perhaps so. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Passon, the best in the business at covering Major League Baseball, joining us here on Sedano and Cap on 710 ESPN. You're the best, brother. Thank you so much for the time. Good to talk to you again. Thank you, boys. Take it easy. Oh, wait. They're going to have bad years coming up. They found it. <laughs> <laughs> they found it. I love it. Great job, staff. All right, Pass it. Thank you, buddy. Great, it's a great jingle, by the way, isn't it? Like, it's really. We, cool. We're going to work on it. So we've got a guy who creates jingles around here. Trust yeah. me, we'll work on something yeah, ours for you. will be a little bit more contemporary. And Jeff a little Passin, cooler. He loves the Gardos. Oh, enough. <laughs> All right, Jeff. Wow. Thank you, buddy. Clip it. See ya.